Hi, I'm Ben. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a subscriber, thank you. We recently just hit 500 subscribers, so big shout out to everybody who subscribed to our channel. Today, I want to talk about the Fujifilm X106. Now, I know that this camera is really popular, and I know that there are a ton of videos that came out well before this, but anytime I get a new piece of kit or tech that I really like, I always want to spend some time talking about it. Now, this camera has been out for over six months now, and I'll be honest, I pre-ordered this the day of it being released, so I know that there's still a lot of people out there that are waiting to get this camera, but I did want to talk today about, is this camera still worth it six months later? Does it really live up to the hype? And then I wanna talk about some of my favorite accessories for it. So if you've already got one or you're going to be getting one here shortly, I wanna talk about some of my favorite things that I have bought for mine. Now, a few notes about this video. First off, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I've not been asked to make this video by Fujifilm or any of the companies that I bought this from. Every opinion expressed in today's video is of my own opinion. All right, a little bit of backstory about this camera. I pre-purchased this camera back in, I think it was February. I ordered it basically the day that it was released. I saw the announcement and uh, by like eight, nine, 10 in the morning, you know, I saw that this camera was definitely going to be a hit. And I had been looking for a camera that helped bring photography back into some of our travels. And I think that this is the perfect opportunity. If you've seen any of our previous vlogs from Japan, I did not get this camera before we went to Japan, which is such a shame. But any of our travels coming up, like some of our travels to hopefully maybe other parts of Europe, I will bring this camera with me and I will get some more shots with this. But I've had this camera for about 30 days. So I think that that's a sufficient time for me to be able to review this. So I'm gonna jump into the review here and I wanna talk about a few things up front, but I think the most important thing is the image quality. This camera has a 40 megapixel sensor, but one of the things I should note is it's not a full frame sensor. It is a crop sensor. It's about the size of a Super 35 or APS-C. However, the quality of this sensor is significantly better than basically any of the previous APS-C cameras I've ever used. If you're familiar with any of the Canon and Nikon cameras that previously sold APS-C sensors, those have always been kind of more of a budget option, but Fujifilm pretty much exclusively makes crop sensors. So this is their bread and butter and they've done a very good job with this. This is their latest release. I think it's the X-Trans 5. It's an incredible, dynamic range, very good color renditions. I'm actually very happy with this sensor and I find it quite comparable to some of my full frame cameras, except in certain situations like low light, obviously a smaller sensor can't do as well as a full frame sensor. And obviously the FX3 or the A7S3 is gonna be really good in low light. Or if you're looking at some of like the really high end Sony's, it's not going to compete with all of the full frame cameras out there, but it is going to be good enough for my purposes for this. The second thing that I wanted to talk about was the autofocus. Now, I think any good camera these days has to have good autofocus, and I think this meets most of the points that I need. Now, it's not as good as a Sony camera, and I think it's about as good as a previous generation Canon camera. Um, I don't have too much experience with those. I know that the current generation of Canon cameras are absolutely incredible. I know that Sony has been incredible for the last few years. So I think this is pretty close to being on par with them, but this does have some nice features and controls that kind of help make up for that. And I think that's the next topic that I wanna talk about. The controls on this camera are quite interesting. They're very similar to the traditional film controls that you know, you're used to if you've bought any of the film cameras from the 80s. It's fairly manual. And I think if you understand the exposure triangle with ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, I think you'll be able to use this camera pretty quickly after you pick this up. Now, if you're new to those topics, there's plenty of YouTube videos. I'm sure you can find out how to use it but this camera might be a little bit difficult for you to get the best image quality out when you're starting, but I think that eventually you will get there. I think that this is a great learner's camera for that reason. One of the things that kind of drew me to this camera is the fact that it's a 23 millimeter APS-C lens on here, which is basically equivalent to a 35 millimeter full frame, which if you don't know, that's one of my favorite focal lengths. And I think this is one of the most common focal lengths of almost any photography that you will see, which is why this camera I think really fits into the niche of 
you know, basically your, your all around everyday travel camera. And that's what it's filling for me. Now there is a few nice features with this. It is a fixed focal length camera, meaning that it's always going to shoot in 23 millimeter mode. You can't zoom in and out of this in an optical way. However, you can crop into the sensor and zoom in basically in a digital way. And that's what this little ring on the front allows you to do in its most basic mode. It allows you to crop into the sensor and basically you, you crop into that 40 megapixel sensor down to about half and then again, and you can get basically an equivalent of like a 50 or 70 millimeter lens, which is really nice when you're kind of in a tight spot. Now, me personally, I try not to use that. I try to always crop in post. I always like to get the widest field of view possible. However, you can do that if you want to get the best image quality right out of camera, which this camera is great for doing that, especially if you're posting directly to Instagram or social media, or if you work on like a documentary or a film crew and you're trying to get the images out of camera straight uploaded to the cloud, I think that this camera can definitely do that. So that brings me to the next topic. I wanna to talk about the film simulations in this camera. I think that this is pretty much the reason everybody is buying this camera and it's one of the main reasons that I bought this camera because the Fujifilm colors and the Fujifilm film simulation is like out of this world. I think that they understand the best way to get a film look out of a digital sensor and that is what they are known for and I think that they've knocked it out of the park with this camera. It's absolutely phenomenal. You could basically change any settings. They have a bunch of recipes in here which is you know kind of what they've been called colloquially in the community but the other thing that's really valuable and nice about this is the fact that you can tune it yourself. So you can basically select one of the basic film simulations that are in the camera and then you can adjust it to get the colors and film qualities that you really want of your favorite film stock. Now, I do have a favorite film stock. I do love Kodachrome, those very traditional like Kodak Gold, Kodak Kodachrome that was released. Very popular in National Geographic magazines. I think that was like one of their most popular film stocks. I love that look and I love the fact that I can get that straight out of camera here. Now, that is one of the biggest benefits of this camera is the fact that you can shoot in either JPEG or HEIF, which is this new high compressible format. It works great on iPhones. I think iPhones have had this option for the past few years. So the fact that you can shoot on that in some of these nicer, more full-size cameras is amazing. And the fact that I can just transfer this right to my cell phone and be able to read it and upload it right to social media as quickly as possible is great. Um, if you want the more compatible version, you can still shoot in JPEG and still get that film simulation. It looks just as good. However, the HEIF or the high compressible film format does give you a little bit more flexibility in post. Now you can shoot raw in this camera. It is completely available for you to do that. It's not something that I would necessarily recommend. I think most photographers online would say, hey, shoot everything in raw and then edit in Lightroom in post. I think this is one of the exceptions to that. I think the fact that this camera has such a good film simulation straight out of camera, I love it for that ability. So I wanna talk about the battery life next. Now the battery life on this camera is not super great. I'll be honest, I expected that the initial battery that I got with this would last quite a long time and that I'd be able to take, you know, most of my day in, you know, one battery. And I, I think I found out that it's not really that capable. I think if you're shooting a lot of shots, I think they, they rate it for like 450 shots in for single battery in economy mode. And I found that it's a little bit less than that. I've not had that good of an experience with the battery life on this. Most of the times I pretty much eat through a battery in a few hours, which is kind of a shame, but I think that that's because this thing has both this nice digital back screen here and the digital finder, which is also a really unique feature of this camera. You can switch between optical and digital viewfinder, which if you're used to the digital SLRs of the past or even the film SLRs of even further past, you can kind of utilize this and you can see through the front glass element on this and uh, take shots in kind of like a rangefinder mode, or you can use that traditional back screen. I think both of those eat up a lot of battery though, which is why I think I would recommend anybody buying this camera, you should probably buy a second battery because I'll be honest, it really kind of sucks when you're traveling or uh, going around, if you have to go back to the hotel room to get an extra battery or charge your camera, you know, it's kind of frustrating if you're, you're already out and you're like halfway across the town my recommendation would just be buy a second battery, keep it in your bag or your purse, and it's super helpful. Um, that is one of the other nice features of this camera. To be honest, it does allow for USB-C charging. 
which is really nice. This does charge at, I think, uh, PD speeds, so the power delivery speeds are pretty high on this. I think it's like 20 watts. You can charge the battery, so it is pretty quick. I think it only takes about an hour to, get, to fully charge the battery, which is really nice. Um, maybe even faster in some certain circumstances, but I've had a good experience with it, and it's one of the nicest features of this camera. So the last thing that I want to talk about is the use cases of this camera. What do I think that this camera is good for? And what do I think you should probably look at another camera for? So first off, I think that this camera is absolutely incredible for pretty much any travel photography or like everyday general photography. I think this, is, this camera is also great for journalists. I think if you're looking for a camera that can shoot great photos straight out of camera, this is the perfect camera for you. And that's where it kind of starts leading me into where I don't think that this camera works. This camera doesn't really work in professional environments. So if you're planning on shooting weddings or you're doing corporate shoots or basically anywhere you need the highest quality, um, also things like wildlife, because the zoom range on this is really kind of poor, you would much rather have a telephoto lens for something like wildlife. I think in those situations, this camera is really not a good option. I think that there's other options from Fujifilm out there if you really want the Fujifilm brand, if you really want that film emulation, but there's also other brands like Sony and Canon and Nikon out there with interchangeable lenses, which might be a much better option for you. I also think people look for that interchangeable big lens camera in some of those professional situations. So while this camera could absolutely take phenomenal photos in those situations, I think some corporate and professional clients, especially at weddings, are looking for a very specific camera type, and this camera does not really fit that look. So the final thing that I wanted to talk about on this camera is some of my favorite accessories. As you can see, some of them are already on this camera, and I'm going to start with the one that I think has changed the way that I carry cameras the most, and this is the Peak Design Leash. Now, I absolutely love the colorway in this. This is this coyote brown, and I think it looks phenomenal with the all black version of the Fujifilm. So if this is the colorway that you've ordered, I highly recommend this. But they've gone with the all blacked out accessories on here with even the black accents all the way at the top here. Even the Peak Design little like snap toggle tags that they've got on here. Normally these are red and black, but they've gone with the all black version of it, which I think just absolutely sets off the look of this camera with it being all black. And you know, this kind of being the perfect earth tone, it doesn't draw too much attention to you, but I think it adds kind of like a splash of color. I love the earth tones on this. And this is one of my favorite accessories for the X100 series. So if you have a previous version of this camera, I think this will be great. My second favorite accessory for this is actually this little small rig hot shoe thumb rest. Now this actually comes in a kit from small rig. I'm trying to put it up to the camera there. Give everybody a nice look at that. It's a nice thumb rest that's on the back of the camera um, that kind of allows you to rest your hand on the back of the camera. It really makes this a very like single handed camera that you can, you know, shoot basically, you know, all day long, just with one hand. You don't have to have two hands. You don't have to hold it. If you obviously want a steady shot, you can absolutely do that. But this is something I like because if you've got a phone in one hand or you're trying to get directions or, or, you know, traveling across the world, you know, you've got one hand busy. You've got another hand here that can easily hold this camera. Without this on there, you can definitely hold it, but it's not a sure grip. And it makes me kind of uncomfortable because if my thumb slips off, this camera is going to fall. So it makes it a little bit uncomfortable to do that. And it's a pretty cheap addition too. The last thing that I wanna talk about is this Hogue Square lens hood. Now this is a really nice addition to this camera. And while it is somewhat functional, I think that it's not as like, it's more for looks than anything. The fact that I can adjust this and take this all the way off is great. The other thing that I bought as part of this accessory kit is this little filter that goes in. It's just a clear UV filter but you can see it how thin this camera is without this filter on the front. But when you add this filter on the front, it has really two primary benefits. The first is your lens is nice and protected now from any of the dirt and dust and debris. And this also weatherproofs this camera. If you look up what Fujifilm says, 
this camera is rated for, it actually says, hey, this camera is relatively weatherproof and waterproof. However, in order for it to be fully weatherproof and waterproof, you actually have to add a clear filter to the front of it and add an adapter for that clear filter. This camera does not have a built-in filter thread on the front of it um, because it is a moving element, which means that you know it would, it would not be able to um, mesh with that 49 millimeter adapter that you get. So it actually does make this camera a little bit wider. However, I think this really adds to the look. I love this rangefinder look. I love this square hood. The one downside to it is, is if you're utilizing the optical viewfinder in this, you can partially see this lens hood in that viewfinder and it does kind of block part of the shot if you're using the optical viewfinder. Now the one benefit to this camera is the fact that you can easily switch it over to the digital viewfinder and when you switch it over to the digital viewfinder it's no big deal um, you can just utilize the digital viewfinder which is utilizing the sensor in the camera so that's been a review of my three favorite accessories on this camera i absolutely think that this camera is a great buy if you're looking for a travel camera or something that you can easily fit in your bag that's not going to take up a lot of space and you happen to really like the 35 millimeter field of view I think that this camera is perfect for almost anybody in that situation. I think if you're interested in behind the scenes documentary shoots or any other like, you know, just general lifestyle photography, this camera is perfect for you. If you're not looking for those things, I think that there's other options out there. All right, that's it for me. Hopefully you guys like this video and you like content like this. We try to cover a bunch of travel stuff. We do try to take vlogs when we go travel places, but we also like to cover tech and food as well on the side. Those are our other two pillars. So if you like any of those things, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. And we will see you on the next one. Be kind, travel more.